Hello everyone, welcome to the fourth of a series of webinars entitled AI Talks at the ETUI. My name is Aida Ponce del Castillo, a senior researcher here at the European Trade Union Institute, and today I will be your host. Today I have two special guests directly from France, Odile Chagny, a special economist. Uh, she's initially, she initially focused on forecasting foresight and public policy analysis in several administrations and research centers in France. But for the past 15 years, she has been working for trade unions and workers representatives. She has a very nice role because she founded and co-moderates the Sharer and Workers Network since 2015. Sharer and Workers Network is, is engaged in many European countries and at national level projects and has initiatives aiming to address the challenges posed by the development of platforms and AI, and in particular in the area of social dialogue. She, uh, Odile, is a co-author of the book, Uberization, Désubériser, Reprendre les Contrôles, in French. Also, we have another nice expert from France, Nicolas Blanc. He is a national delegate for issues for the French trade union CFE and CGC, it's the whole uh, acronym, but he's also a very active expert in many groups at the OECD AI network on policies. And together they are working on a very special project uh, founded by the European Commission, the Sequoia Deal Project to address the many challenges posed by the development of artificial intelligence and the impact of employment, unemployment and work, and in particular, the area of social dialogue, the area that we are going to discuss today. So Odile and Nicola, welcome to our AI Talks, and you have the floor for a short presentation. Hello. Hello, 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 everybody. Thank you for the invitation. First, I think it's very important for Trade Union to explain what we what we think about regulation of AI. So, uh, as you explained before, I'm a, a national delegate for the CFECGC. CFECGC is a French Confederation of Management. Uh, we are a, a, a trade union for executive in France. So, uh, at the CFECGC, we are. Uh, We've been working on uh, artificial intelligence uh, since uh, 2000, uh, 2017. Uh, first, we, uh, we created a, a series of uh, roundtables about uh, artificial intelligence to understand the goals and the objective. It was uh, important for us to understand how, how, uh, how, it will be, uh, how the impact will be on, uh, on, uh, on sector, something like that. And after that, we, we created a, a, a charter about uh, ethical and, and digital to understanding the, the life cycle of data, of di data for, uh, for uh, employees. It was very interesting to understand uh, uh, how the data uh, will be able to be used in, in, uh, in, in companies. So it was a, a, 
uh, something very important for, for our uh, trade union to, to, to do that with, uh, with uh, HR department, for example, in company. And uh, this uh, charter was enriched with a contribution uh, from the CNIL, C-N-I-L, who is uh, the um, French Data Protection Authority. So it was very important for us to have uh, them uh, with us uh, for, for this work. After that, we collaborated with a firm called Atlink. Uh, it was uh, very important for us to demystify the Oxford studies, the Frey, the Frey and Osborne st uh, studies, because about, uh, the, 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 about employment and something like that. So uh, we tried, we, we worked about uh, a job of radiologists to, uh, to, st to study exactly what, uh, what a job, uh, what exactly, in a, in a task, in a, so it was very interesting to understand the reality of a job, and uh, I will explain after what is the reality of a job. And uh, after that, we want to to, to work uh, about uh, the value added by the artificial intelligence. It was very important for us for us to understand that, and also to understand the, the future uh, digital skills we will be able to find very important for employees or something like that. So that's why we define a new, a new European project with name Sequoia Deal. And I will let uh, Odile introduce the project. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nicola. So before I introduce the project, uh, just uh, present also the, the approach we have, we, we have uh, in the Shares and Workers uh, Network, which I very nicely presented uh, previously. So, Indeed, um, Shares and Workers is an initiative, initiative which was initiated, initiated by its network, which was initiated in uh, 2015 by two organizations. So IRES, which is little sister, French little sister of, of ETUI, it is a trade union related institute, and ASTRE, which is an organization, an association. So a uh, member of uh, SOS Group, so a le uh, leader in social entrepreneurship in France. And, and uh, the idea was, as you explained, either to address the challenges posed by the development of platforms in RA, uh, particularly in the field of social dialogue. So we have three fields of uh, work in the shares and networks, shares and workers networks. The first one, the historical one, was uh, to address um, all the issues of platform work um, in order to promote, I would say, a balanced approach of uh, uh, platform work and uh, algorithmic management. So enabling at uh, uh, promoting a, a representation of platform work and also enabling a balanced social dialogue. So in this framework, we. We build up, uh, we organize expert groups, uh, discussion groups, and we also we created together with the, in collaboration with the uh, ET ETUC, uh, what we call a digital platform observatory um, aimed at uh, promoting and uh, showing uh, initiatives uh, of uh, trade unions or collectives to enhance uh, re representation and social dialogue in the platform economy. This is our first field of uh, work. The second one uh, is a bit special uh, in, the, in the way that we are also uh, attempting to promote uh, alternatives to capitalist platforms, uh, especially by promoting interoperability solutions. So this is more technical approach and which is very much related also to the recent Data Act or Data Governance Act. And in this framework, we organize, so I would say a cycle of conferences, uh, which we call the web après the platform, the web post platforms, where we address all the, the possibilities and the capabilities to create a business model based on interoperable standards in order to uh, enhance uh, non-capitalistic and distributed uh, actors. And the, the third uh, field of uh, work we have is Sequoia deal. So this is our big project, our big European project. We we um, we have uh, these uh, uh, these times, uh, these months, uh, in this period with the CFSCGC, uh, which Nicola represents here today. So this is, uh, I would say, Sequoia deal is a little bit of an equilibrist um, exercise. So we, this is, of course 
something like a European project. So we have uh, we benefit from the uh, funding from the European Commission, of course. This is a, um, a partnership uh, project because uh, we have we have we have five organizations uh, leading the project. So CFSCGC is leader of the project, but we have also uh, representatives of uh, our shareholders and workers network, so IRIS and ASWI, but also uh, U2P, which is uh, the union of proximity, uh, which is uh, the organization uh, representing union of proximity companies in France, but also other organization uh, of uh, uh, managers in Europe, and especially CHIDA, which is the Italian Confederation of Managers. But we also have associated organizations like CEC, uh, the European Confederation of Executives, and also LEDANA, the Swedish manager organization, but also uh, other uh, associated organizations, as for example, Algorithm Much, the TRAC, and the uh, Brodolini Foundation. So why do I tell, uh, why did I tell that this is a sort of equilibrium exercise? This is not because we are not, uh, we, this is not because we shall not provide uh, results because otherwise the European Commission will not uh, grant us the money, but this is because uh, the, the project relies on a bet. We, we, may, we have this betting that this is possible to go in this period uh, where we, we know that the maturity for AA uh, is really gaining in importance. So we are in capability of betting that this is possible to go beyond the diagnosis uh, that uh, is by some aspect really well established about AI, AI impact on uh, so uh, social issues or work or uh, let's say uh, regulatory issues and to 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 think about the possibility to to propose to actors to stakeholders to work together uh, within the group which created uh, to to in order to be able to formulate recommendations to address uh, more precisely uh, some use case uh, where we could go beyond the diagnosis phase and let's say uh, try to to build up some uh, uh, the concrete actions regarding social dialogue or the capability of analyzing uh, value creation. So this is really important. And Nicola already mentioned that, that we have really two focuses in the project. Uh, the one is that uh, we work about uh, economic value creation because we are convinced that we are entering a period where uh, so we are, but everybody is convinced that uh, we are entering a period where AI uh, value creation, economic value creation will really gain in importance. And the second focus is that we are also convinced that managers uh, are key uh, actors in enterprises for promoting a balanced social approach of AI. So this is uh, very broadly uh, uh, sum summarized the main aims of our Sequoia Deal project. Thank you, Odil. Uh, Nicola, would you like to add something else or can I start with more precise questions? About sorry? Would you like to, to complement Odil with something else or can I start with our dialogue for this session? Uh, yeah, but uh, maybe we can discuss about impact of AI about organization and companies about yeah yeah well this is my first question it's just to to, to take the audience into a nice uh um dialogue with you so um the reason why we have uh, odil and nicola here in the webinar is to explain to us what type of experiences they have found in the field so with this european project that they have talked about they have also looked at the impact of artificial intelligence in many workplaces. And we know that this is a big question mark for those of us who are dealing with both labor and data protection. And with also some of us who are dealing with the technicalities of AI, because we don't know how to find the, the thread between the three of them. But with more practical cases, Nicola, Odile, can you explain to us how is AI impacting the workplaces, at least in Europe? Please, you have the floor. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's it's very complex uh, for us, for trade union, for example, to to uh, to measure the impacts of AI because uh, if uh, the impacts are very diffuse because companies tra company strategies are very unclear. Because today uh, there, is, there, there are very few uh, companies who have a data-driven business model approach, and that's very complicated complicated for us to understand to understand the strategy of company. So that's why we decided to work uh, on our side and to anticipate these impacts. It, it, uh, we, we can do that in uh, in our project uh, Sequoia Deal, but I'm also. Uh, uh, work on other project uh, uh, with uh, GPI, and I propose a, a use case about uh, about um, uh, the work of a radiologist. What I explained before, and I propose uh, to to show the impact of organization of uh, on, on the work on the wo world of work. I propose uh, an um, an a use case with a, a radiologist and AI is for example uh, an automated report with an automatic speed, speech recognition by AI uh, called ASR. And uh, for example, the radiologist will be able to himself to, to, to speak to the AI system and to, to do the, the report himself, you know? And uh, we can find two impacts about, uh, about the, the new, uh, this new technology has two direct impacts. The first one is on the job of the radiologist who becomes the editor of the document because he, he, he will be able to correct the error of the AI until the final production. And before, and before that, uh, you, you have uh, uh, an impact on the organization because he will be able to do that uh, with um, with the secretary who help him to do that. You understand? So you have a direct impact of the organization of the work because before you have the secretary who help him to to uh, transcript uh, the first document uh, redacted by the radiologist, and after that you have an AI system. Uh, without uh, without the secretary to help to help him to correct the documents or something like that, but it's a workload very important for the radiologist. After that, and for the secretary, uh, you can uh, it's not uh, maybe it's not important to have uh, this job again because the secretary uh, don't do this this job anymore. You know that. So that's why it's an important impact on the organization, and we we and the, the goal, for example, of Sequoia Deal, we will do the same for other jobs. We will, we will analyze the impact of the for any jobs, and uh, we will understand what exactly what will be uh, what will be the, the process will be we will be able to be uh, automatized. You understand? So that's very important to to work about that. Odile, please, you yes. want to compliment? <laughs> yes, I, I shall uh, add some uh, um, thoughts uh, regarding this issue. So uh, your question, Ida, is about organizations and companies, but uh, the, the, the above question is about economic impact of AI. And uh, so what I, I think uh, we could uh, stress is that um, in, in contrast with other, other digital technologies, uh, IA um, entails really specific uh, characteristics, which um, also have uh, impact on the way we, could, we can assess the impact on value creation, organizations, and uh, let's say the work uh, collective, uh, the, wor the work collectives. And we all know these uh, characteristics, uh, we, we, at least intellectually. Uh, we know that uh, AI systems are, are based, interestingly based on uh, value creation uh, cycle. So we have different steps in AI systems. And these steps, we know they, they begin uh, in, in, in the company. They, they also imply a furniture of uh, AI systems. And we know that uh, this leads to a sort of uh, blurring frontiers between uh, what is happening in the, in the company, 
uh, when the AI system is implementing and in, in, the, in the provider of the AI systems, because we are uh, working with loop of our training uh, uh, of uh, with an impact on the AI system itself. We know, of course, that AI uh, systems are interestingly uh, defined by the way they interact and they influence the environment. And I will also add that we are also in the early age, in the early period, where we see the, the development of AI systems, which are not, let's say, expert systems, so tools helping uh, some professionals uh, to, to, pro to, to exert or to make some tasks. Like, for example, the radiologist is still using a tool. But what we are also, and now what we are experiencing uh, is the, and we are also what we shall experience uh, enhanced by data act and data governance is uh, the way that is the fact that uh, the value creation, uh, which will be uh, made possible by AI systems, will have uh, probably really very uh, huge impacts on business models itself. And uh, what I would like to stress is, uh, and I shall give some examples, but what I like, would like to stress is uh, when we, we read uh, the, the, let's say, the assessments impact studies made by big consulting firms like PwC or McKinsey or even Roland Berger. So what we can notice is that, well, the, the only story they explain us is that we shall have, um, let's say, uh, huge productivity gains. Uh, which will be able to, uh, let's say, uh, create more value without uh, even uh, t uh, telling us anything about social uh, issues regarding this uh, uh, value creation. I had to look at, the, I searched for the term social in the McKinsey report, assessment report to the AI Act, and I found no incidents, for example. But what is absent, and this is really very striking in, in the appreciation of uh, value creation, is that uh, you cannot say only so AI will increase productivity in specific sectors. AI will displace the where the value uh, will be created. And uh, for example, we have uh, so we 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 already so knew uh, that well okay we all understood all, all what is happening with platform work that uh, platforms. Uh, uh, explain as they are, they are, they are creating uh, value uh, within the, to, with, with, while they transport people or whatsoever deliver uh, meals. But we all know that the interesting value created is uh, is not uh, linked to the to the transportation of people or the delivery of meals, but to the exploitation of the of the data uh, they collect. But this question of displacement of value creation means that, for example. Um, you take the example of, of uh, let's say, uh, insurance in automotive sectors. We have this example in our project. So uh, initially, you had uh, the driver, you had the insurance company, and you had the garage. And then uh, the, the driver uh, had to call the, his insurance, his insurance company, and the insurance company uh, asked an expert to look at the car and to make the diagnosis, and then the garage had to pay for the reparation of the car. So, and now what we see is AI systems, which enable the driver to take this own picture, which he sends to the insurance company. And then the experts is no more uh, asked to make any expertise. Also, it is compulsory to make an expertise. And then the driver receives uh, the authorization or not by his insurance to go to the garage and make the reparation. Where, is, where was the value created before? The value was created by the expert. Now, who creates the value? The value is created by the, by the driver, but is uh, exploited by the insurance company. And so uh, this example uh, is related, for example, to, an, uh, to is related to an AI system in a very specific sector. It is. Uh, we, we could also find many other examples, like for example, sharing data. I know that sharing data is not uh, 
cannot be considered as AI uh, itself uh, as per se. But if you take the possibility, for example, to share data in, in energy sector. So we have an example of a, a cooperative uh, created in the, in, a, in the energy sector. So for decentralized uh, production of uh, um, uh, energy, so solar and wind energy by, by citizens. And uh, they, they share their data with, for example, uh, representatives of uh, uh, collectivities and, for example, uh, uh, managers of uh, network management like uh, uh, RTE in France, so big uh, enterprises. And what, what is happening with this capability of decentralizing uh, with, via the, sh the data sharing, uh, the, the collection of data is that before, the one who had the power was the, um, monitor, the, the firm who was monitoring all the data. So within a really property um, uh, framework. And what is now possible is that you share the value creation among many different actors. So, and the main uh, thing I would like to, to, to stress uh, with this uh, remark is that if you consider that you displace the, the value creation, then you have to also to ask yourself how you share the, this value created, who is involved in the creation of value. And this means uh, that you have also to, to think about the stakeholders, which are the stakeholders involved in the sharing of the value created. Is this within firms, within one firm? Not especially, not always. Is it, is it also implying, uh, the, uh, let's say, uh, people, uh, partners or uh, other stakeholders contributing to the creation of their value? Probably. And this is also the key issue we address within the project to consider that if you, if you consider that you displace the, 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 the let's say, uh, the, the location, uh, uh, the, the way you, you create, uh, the, the, the location where you create the value, then you have also to think about the way you, how you share it and which, with which stakeholders. And we think this is really an important issue. Yes, I agree with that. So it's an issue about AI governance, but also an issue about data governance. And today in Europe, we have an umbrella of uh, regulations uh, being proposed and being negotiated now at the at Parliament and the Council doing, dealing with that. Uh, before we go into the next question, Nicola, would you like to add something shortly? Yeah, I would like to add something more about uh, impacts of AI organization. As I explained before, it, it's very complicated for us to, to, to understand the, the strategy of company about AI because the strategy is not clear. We don't know exactly what they want to do with the, with AI, uh, what the strategy about the business model. So it's it's very complicated for for us to understand what will be. What Nicola, the... sorry to interrupt you. What are the ways for trade unions or trade unions representatives to ask about information of the company strategy on artificial intelligence? Um, it's very complicated. That's why we prefer to have, I will answer to the question after that. But I think it's important to understand it's, uh, we, we have a, a social by design approach because uh, we, 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 uh, we must to understand what, what the strategy will be and it's not, it's not clear for us. So we need to understand what, will, what the impact will be on, a, on, a, on job. So that's why we propose to, to have this social by design approach. That's why we need to, to, to discuss with companies before to understand about a, a, a charter, about a ethical committee, something like that, what they want to do, but it, it, it wants a, a, a co-construction. In France, it's not like that. I will explain because today we have, a, we have a regulation. We can discuss about regulation if you want, or maybe, you, okay. No, that maybe you, you... Later, later we discuss. Finish with your intervention. No, I think it's important. We, we need to understand the strategy of companies. It's the first thing we have to do because after that, we, we, we will be able to understand the, the, the value added, added by the AI. We can discuss about the, the skills, the upskilling, the reskilling of jobs, something like that. But we need to understand first, first the strategy. Because, for example, if you take the example of energy, Odile, Odile take 
took this, this example, it's a very good example because today we, uh, this, this kind of companies created a lot of data about energy, but we don't know exactly what they want to do. Uh, if they want to, to, to have a, a, a data driven model, business model, something like that, they want to transform the business model of the company, we need to understand that. After that, we can define what the job will be impacted by that. But today it's not clear. So what we want first is to, is to have a good strategy, to discuss the strategy, like uh, as another stakeholders, it's very important for trade union representatives to discuss that and to discuss the, the workforce planning after that, you understand? Because the workforce planning, will, uh, if you have the strategy, you will have the workforce planning to define and we can discuss about that and to define that in, in workers committee. It's very important to have that to define after that the skills, the competencies, what we, what the future, future of job is very important for us. Today, we don't have that. It's very complicated to have that. So that's why we propose to have a social by design approach for a project. It's a local approach because when you have a new project about AI, we can, we can discuss with, uh, with the team, for example, for, for, for the, what, what the social impact will be. And we can discuss about, for example, automated processes about jobs. It, it, uh, it's possible to discuss about that, but we can do that upstream. It's the most important thing where to define that uh, before the beginning of the project, because after that, for us, it's, it's very complicated. And we have to discuss that in workers committee to understand that. But before, I think the strategy is the most important. Companies uh, must have a very clear strategy about AI to discuss with a union representative and, and with the workers, with employees, because it's not clear for it's, it's not clear for us. It's not clear for the employees. Thanks. Is the company strategy something that is openly discussed with trade unions, or is it part of a more confidential business information? My question here is how easy is it for trade unions to get into uh, the discussion of these strategic approaches on artificial intelligence with top match managers? But you know, in France, to discuss about uh, strategic uh, orientation is uh, mandatory. So it's important for us to understand that it's a uh, we can do that in a workers' committee. It's uh, just uh, it's uh, how to explain that. Uh, it just us, uh, them and us, we can discuss all together about, about the strategy, but it's an, it's a mandatory, it's an obligation. But, uh, as a trade union representative, uh, I, I didn't, I, I don't understand the strategy for companies. So, so maybe, uh, it's, it's a secret, but <laughs> it's very important to understand the, the future of work. If you, if we don't have that, we can explain, uh, uh, what what the added value will be and what we want to do with the AI? It's not very clear. You have you have a lot of projects. It's a proof of concept. Okay, it's very important to do that. It's a, it's a, it's the beginning of AI. But after that, if, if you want if you want to implement that in a, in a, in companies, we need to define a strategy and business model associated to this strategy. Because if you don't have that, you have nothing. And it's very important for us to, to have a, a clear strategy to understand what, what the job will be after that, what the new skills we, we, will, be, we will be able to have. And we have to define the future of job and, uh, and the upskilling or reskilling for, for, uh, for employees because uh, for them, for us, it's very complicated today. Thank you. Thank you, Nicolas. Let's, because you mentioned about the regulatory aspect. Um, uh, maybe we can already start speaking about that. And today we have, we are discussing the proposed uh, regulation of the European Commission, the AI Act in the Parliament and in Council. And I would like to ask you both, what is your opinion, Odile and Nicola, on this proposed regulatory model? Do you think it's enough? It's sufficient? It's there something missing? What can we do differently? Any opinion will be welcome, please. I can begin. Yeah. Yeah, uh, today uh, for AI, you, you have a, a governance model with proposed. It, it's about uh, three pillars. I think it's very important to understand that. So you have the, what, we, what we call a hard law with the AI Act. It's very important. The first point, it's uh, to, to put, uh, I think it's important to have the, the world of work as addressed as a high risk 
I think it was the first thing to do because uh, the, there was some uh, consultation about that and it, it was a demand, a demand, sorry, for the trade union uh, organization. And it's very important to identify the world of work as a high risk approach. And uh, that's why the, uh, that's a good point for, for the regulation. I, I would like to, to say that uh, before. After that, you have many shortcomings. I think it's, uh, it's very complicated today to, to have a, a hard law, very, very powerful. So I, I will uh, take a look on the shortcomings. For example, the risk-based management uh, it's it's uh, it's important for business, but it's not an approach, a human-centric approach, for example. So it's very good for you. You can define the risk uh, based for an application, something like that. But it's more complicated in the world of work because if we, for example, uh, for hiring uh, AI system, is not is not very clear. Uh, so for example, for emotion recognition system. Today, uh, you have some, some uh, uh, emotional uh, emotion recognition system to, to hire from people. It will be a risk-based uh, management system. I don't know that. I'm not sure with that. So I think it's very complicated for them to identify them. That After that, you have a few constraints about uh, the risk on fundamental rights. Because uh, today, the, the corrective measure proposed, for example, by the provider, by the user of AI system. So I think it's, it, it's not very clear because, because uh, as I explained before, it's not a human-centric approach. So the fundamental rights is indicated in the text. It, it will be uh, binding with the standard. I will explain that before, but after, sorry, but it's not very clear. So, so you have to respect fundamental rights. You have to do something about fundamental rights, but you don't have an, an, an fundamental right uh, assessment, for example, it's not mandatory, so it's not clear. We will we will see in the in the standard proposed by the uh, European Commission, but I think it's not today. It's not very clear in the text. So you have only uh, you have to protect fundamental rights. You have to propose a corrective uh, measure, something like that, but it's not very clear. After that, uh, what I explained before, it's a risk based management. So you have to to do a self assessment self-assessment, you do everything you want. It's okay if you don't have a, a regulatory uh, a committee to discuss about that, it, it, it will be able very complicated. So uh, you do everything you want for the corrective action, you can do everything you want. So I think for me, it's, uh, it's a very complicated. And the, and the last point, two points more. The first one is uh, there, there are uh, no obligation for users. Because if you uh, well understand the, the, the text proposed, you have obligation for providers of AI system. Okay, you, you have to, to put your application on, on the register. You have to have a lot of obligation, assessment. You have to define a lot of things uh, before to put it in the, in the European market. That's it. But after that, uh, for the user, as you know, uh, AI today, it's a tool and a context data and the tool. So you, uh, to, uh, after that, you, you will use the tool with uh, your own context, but you have uh, no obligation about what, we, what the user will do with the AI system. So uh, we consider it's very complicated for, to use it, for, to use them, for example, in, in enterprise, it could be very complicated. And the last point, it's, uh, there is nothing about collective data management. Because as you know, uh, the GDPR, it's only for personal data. So it's okay for us, but for collective data for, for in, uh, employees in, in company, you have nothing to explain, maybe in data governance, not, it's, not, it's, it's only a business approach also. So today you don't have the tool to, uh, for, uh, for trade union, for example, to protect the, the, the data for employee, employees in, a, in, a, in a companies. And it's not in the text uh, what is proposed by the European Commission. Thank you. Thank you, Nicola. And I, I, before moving to Odil, there is a question in the chat that I really want to bring upon. And um, Julie asked us uh, if, can you please clarify and give the name of this directive in French, in France, by which uh, uh, companies are uh, in, are required to involve uh, trade unions 
in the consultation and negotiation of their management strategy. Can you tell us which directive this is in France? Uh, it's, uh, in, it's in the la, la labor law. Uh, it's uh, in France, we said orientation strategique. <laughs> Because in France, you have a three uh, mandatory uh, consultation. Uh, you have a, about uh, uh, the, the count of the company. It's important to have that. And you have the, and the, uh, the social uh, policy. And, and you have also a uh, mandatory uh, consultation about, uh, about sorry, the, the strategy. Orientation strategic. Uh, I don't know if she's French, but uh, thank you. No, I don't think so. This is why our audience in outside the EU are, are very, very uh, curious about that. Odile, you have the floor. Oh yes, and uh, indeed. Um, so, uh, as uh, Nicola explained, uh, this the room for for uh, social dialogue uh, within the AR Act uh, is uh, narrow. Uh, so let's say, except if you are uh, in, a, in a company pro, uh, in the producing uh, AI systems, which are considered as a high risk, like for example, in the banking sector and financial sector, where you are also subject, you are, where we are subject both to the obligations regarding the furnish, furniture and the obligations, the provider and the obligation re, uh, regarding the users then the, the, uh, the way you can accommodate uh, the room for uh, this first control step, so uh, a rendered pos possible by the social dialogue is not really uh, easy to accommodate within the AI Act uh, itself. And this is a bit paradoxically uh, to consider that, for example, and we, all the people who work on the directive on uh, improving the uh, working conditions on, of platform workers are aware of, about that. We know that uh, th there are for more formal rights about information and consultation, which shall be introduced uh, for platform workers uh, regarding uh, automated systems and the algorithmic management within the directive. So this is a bit contradictory. Uh, uh, regarding that uh, the issues are probably as tremendous uh, for, for uh, platform workers as uh, for many uh, all the people uh, who are probably uh, who will be from comforting and will be working within AI systems context. And the, the, sec uh, the second point also mentioned by uh, Nicola is the question about uh, governance, data governance. And hopefully we have uh, also this uh, all this package about uh, data Governance Act and uh, Data Act, which is so uh, coming, which uh, which will uh, probably uh, give us uh, um, more, let's say, formal, which shall give us more formal framework for uh, data sharing and data governance. Uh, but we all also know that this is a big issue of uh, discussing uh, the way that uh, we shall uh, be able to have, so let's say, distributed actors. So um, let's say, for example, uh, data sharing, there are many ways to share data. Interoperability, uh, like for example, uh, promoted by the W3C standards, like solid standards is one way. Uh, organizing rules for sharing data and controlling providers of uh, sharing services is another uh, aim, is another way. And uh, so there is also a discussion about GAIA-X in the European context, because uh, this is in one way organizing uh, the data sharing, uh, uh, promoting big enterprises. And that there's a debate about the, with regard, regarding the presence of so the big tech companies in GAIA-X. And on the other side, we have also a tremendous potential uh, which will be rendered possible by so interoperability and interoperable solutions. But the question is how can we, how shall we so enable all these uh, so possible technical possibilities to coexist 
um, because this is not uh, by, by promoting the, the co uh, cooperative governance within the data governance acts that we, you shall have the same kind of cooperative uh, for, let's say, sharing data and organizing the governance of data that you will have if uh, so the initiative for sharing data comes from all this from distributed actors. Uh, considering uh, the opportunity of sharing that data and organizing themselves uh, with uh, interoperable standards. So I don't know if that's really clear, yes. but I mean, this is not so easy. So these are, uh, by, you know, in one way, alternatives to share data. Thank you, Abdil. And uh, this takes me to, to oh, reminding the audience that they can uh, put their questions here on the chat and we will, uh, it's, it's already time to answer to them. And, and linking to these very difficult things, one uh, question of Shuresh asked about assessing high risk within the AI Act, actually. So how can you, or how would you recommend the audience uh, to identify which are high risk AI systems? Um, is there, in your knowledge, a common understanding about what is high AI system in the context of deployment or what is medium and what qualifies as low risk AI system? Uh, and what does it fluctuate between these three or four, even five, yeah, I would say to Sturish, I have even seen models with five uh, levels of risk categories. Can any of you say something about this, please? I think everything uh, about uh, if, if you take a look to the AI regulation uh, regulation proposed, AI system used in employment, workers management and access to self-employment, notably for the recruitment and selection of person, and nah, 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 should also be classified as high risk. Uh, you don't have to think about, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, everything uh, uh, is about a uh, 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 world of work is about high risk because uh, it could be uh, it could be have an impact about uh, about job about organization about something so i think it, it, it's very and it's very important to understand that that our first uh, uh, recommendation we we did before to the european commission because uh, there was two consultation uh, after the high level expert groups uh, as if you remember that so we answer to the two consultations and we, we are not uh, we uh, we weren't uh, alone to do that because it was very important to do that about the ai assessment list it was uh, an interview about that so i think uh, all all is about uh, world of work is considered as a high risk uh, application. So we okay. don't think about so that. The text, the two, the two paragraphs in Annex 3.4 that describe the context of employment, in your opinion, Odile and Blanc, do they, and Nicola, do they describe all the possibilities of, of the context of employment and work? Is everything included in those two paragraphs? Uh, two things. Yeah, I think for me, yes, yes, because for example, you have a recruitment. Recruitment is very important because you have AI system for recruitment, very powerful. And the the only uh, problem I see it's about emotion recognition system, because today is not is not uh, bend, bend, and I think it's a very it's a problem because you can have a uh, tools. Uh, uh, use uh, will be able to be used in a, in a, in a hiring context, but uh, this system can use uh, emotional recognition system and, and uh, you know uh, data and and uh, we don't know exactly if it's high risk no high risk we don't know it's not very clear and uh, and we did uh, we answer to the to the text proposed maybe it will be uh, banned uh, in the future I think it will be banned. I think it's it's the best option, you know. But we don't know. You, <laughs> we will see in the future. But uh, we'll see. To me, it's okay. Thank you. And uh, Odin, do you I want know. to answer? Uh, Nicola is the specialist of uh, the high risk list in the annex. <laughs> okay, I will ask a question that came early into the chat about uh, uh, the level of uh, trade union um, organization. And Frank Ray. Uh, ask while understanding AI impacts in all sectors that or that understanding that AI impacts all sectors, 
what does low levels of union organization in platform work mean for power and influence of social dialogue for these particular workers? <laughs> I, I'm not sure to have understood the question. What understanding that AI is impact, impacting everywhere, all yes. jobs and all sectors, and also knowing that there is a very low level of union organization, particularly in the platform work, what, uh, what, is the, what means for power and influence of social dialogue for these particular workers? For I mean platform workers or all platform I suppose workers for platform work, yes. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I shall try to uh, formulate some uh, answers regarding platform workers. later. And maybe I can ask in the meantime another question. It's not really a question, but maybe I would like to gather your opinion. Uh, Frank Pot is rightly pointing out at the European Social Partner Framework Agreement on Digitalization that was signed a couple of years ago by the European social partners. Do you think that it can be used to discuss risk assessment on AI at work? I can answer, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, first of all, uh, it's an important uh, European social framework agreement on digitalization. It's very important to understand that because uh, but it's complicated to to uh, about ai because it's about a trustworthy ai and uh, i think but i think it's very important thing that we have to 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 uh, to make it uh, to to make it uh, live in in a national level i think it's very important to 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 rely it on a national level and because I think union uh, will be will become the first level regulator through bottom up social dialogue for regulation. I think it's very important to understand that. We signed the text with uh, with employers and employees uh, at European level, and after that we 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 must to, to do it at a national level. It's very important. And uh, the, the, the only problem I see in the European Social Framework Agreement, it's not only about AI, it's about uh, digital skills, it's about right of di disconnection, it's about uh, um, uh, algorithm, uh, algorithm management, you know? So it's, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a text uh, uh, very important. But uh, for AI, uh, we, we will be to discuss in a national level to define what we want to do after with, with it because uh, with, uh, it's a link, link with uh, uh, skills, uh, uh, competencies and skills as that I see that. But for AI, it's very complicated to, to do that. And speaking more about a worker participation, uh, Odile and yeah. Nicola, um, you want to answer the question about the platform, Sodil? So very, very, very rapidly. Uh, just to um, uh, to suggest that so the, the imbalance of power is such uh, for platform workers, uh, so that uh, we we are very much aware that social dialogue is not the only mean to rebalance the power, and uh, this is exactly what the, also the directive is proposing. Uh, to find other ways to rebalance the power and to protect these workers. And uh, also what is really striking for platform workers is that we, we see that even when they are employees, so for example, Just Eat or some platforms in France uh, like Gorillaz or others are now hiring uh, employees. And we also see that these workers are really uh, so not protected even uh, when they are employees, and this is very, very complicated to organize representation within these uh, so, uh, uh, platforms. So this is a huge challenge uh, to enhance the representation, right? And this is a, a challenge so tackled by uh, many uh, trade unions. And uh, so this is a, a big, big, big issue uh, for platform workers. And to close a deal with this very nice seminar between uh, you and the audience, you were going to speak about standardization. And I want to bring it back just to close it because I think it's very important, Nicola. You were saying that uh, standards, technical standards, uh, harmonized standards uh, adopted by the European Commission and copied by the ones that are being produced in the ISO committees are going to substantiate the legal requirements in the AI Act. What is your opinion about that? 
I think what is uh, complicated today uh, is uh, the, the standard uh, pr proposed is uh, on, uh, it relies mainly on the idea of a co-regulation through standardization with the regulation, you know that? And uh, for regulation, it's okay because, uh, because you have a, a consultation about what we want to do, something like that. But for standardization, it's not the same. Because for standardization, the European standardization organization is not an open discussion. Uh, it will be very complicated to, 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 to change uh, the document proposed. So they, uh, we think it will be very complicated for, for, for us to, to change the, the standardization. And it's very complicated also to have in a, in a standardization the ethical issues. It's complicated to transform an idea about fundamental rights to have that in a, in a, in a standardization. I know that because I, 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 I have also uh, worked on uh, ISO standardization, and it's very complicated to have uh, ethical issues, uh, something like that, because fundamental rights, it, it's not the priority of the standardization organization. So that's why it's very complicated to have a uh, 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 because standardization uh, is, is soft law regulation, as you know. But uh, it, for us, it's complicated to work about that because it's not very clear. It's a, it's a very formal system and uh, we'll do our best, but it's complicated. You wanted to show a slide on this uh, relationship between uh, them but, all the different... Can you please put it up for our audience, uh, Nicole? Oh, sorry. And if there are more questions, we still have some minutes, so please do not hesitate uh, and type them on the chat. It's okay. Do, do you see my screen? Not yet. Not yet, okay. Are you... Um, are you sure that there are no ethical standards in the current program of uh, the Committee on Artificial Intelligence at ISO? Sorry, I didn't understand, sorry. Are you sure that there are no ethical issues being dealt with in the standardization committees in the ISO? Uh, yeah, we will try to do our best, but it's complicated to, for example, uh, if you want uh, for a uh, fundamental right uh, impact assessment, we propose that, but uh, they refuse, refuse, you know that. So that's why we try to, it's always, you should do that, you should do that, but no, you shall do that. I think it's very important to transform the should, we shall. So it's a, it's a long, uh, it's a long fight. <laughs> But uh, we will try to do that, but uh, it's very complicated to change that. As you can see on my screen, you can see it's very long journey to, uh, because there are a lot of committees, lot of, uh, uh, you have the uh, I3E, you have the ISO, you have the group about standardization in Europe, the SEN, Senelec, and it's very complicated to, to organize all this work because uh, in union, uh, uh, it's complicated to have a lot of workers <laughs> to work about that. So we will do our best, but uh, it's a very long journey because you have a, a sous committee and a lot of sous committee and the committees to do that, something like that. So uh, you have about uh, big data, you have about the quality, you have about the, the cyber security, the privacy, and uh, and engineering is very complicated because it's about only the tool, and uh, it's uh, you. You have to be an engineer to understand what what uh, what will be the the standardization about that. So it's a very long, uh, very long work. That's I, I I would like to share with you today. Thank you very much, Nicola. Odil, would you like to sh share some words, uh, messages, and ideas to close this webinar from your side? Yes, so this is something we, we didn't uh, mention a lot uh, during our so talk today, but um, uh, this is something really important for our project to consider that there are many kinds of so dialogue uh, which shall have to be organized. So social dialogue is one, technological dialogue is another one. Uh, uh, so 
uh, stakeholder dialogue is still another uh, dialogue which are all, all necessary for building uh, a sort of uh, social responsible use of uh, AI systems. Thank you. Uh, yes, Nicola, please. Yes, what I would like to say, it, uh, I think a union uh, will become, uh, should become the first level regulators for bottom-up social dialogue for standardization, for regulation, and to enforce the GDPR. For example, the Article 88, we will be able to, to, to negotiate a collective agreements, for example, to define, to define the, the, the interest, uh, legitimate interest in, in, uh, in companies. We can, we can define that by collective agreement. So uh, we, it's important to discuss with trade union about AI. Thank you. <laughs> and, and what about, what very, very last provocative uh, question to both me, of you. What about the strategies of the Googles and Alphabets, Facebooks of the GAFANs in front of the EU AI policies, just to close with it. Uh, Can trade unions do something about that? Is there, is there a space for social dialogue with the GAFANs? Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe, yes. I know you, you have, no, you have trade union in Google. So maybe in the future we will discuss, uh, discuss about that. Maybe in Facebook, in Amazon, I, I, I know that. So I think it's very, it's very important to have a representative for workers. Th that's the, fir the first point. After that, we will be able to discuss. But if you, are, uh, if you have only a, a, a charter about what you want to do with AI, it's not enough. And uh, it's not enough in, in, in companies. So uh, the last... I would like to add something. So I think what is really important is that big enterprises who make partnerships with these enterprises also understand exactly what they are doing. And I think uh, this is not always the case. So if you make a, a, an agreement with the, with the devil, so you, in, this is an image, but uh, you don't have to be surprised that uh, this has consequences also for the old business. All right. Uh, well, this was a nice uh, dialogue and conversation about social dialogue in artificial intelligence or when dealing with artificial intelligence systems. I think this, this theme is starting with your project and it has a long way to go. And this brings us to our end of our today's episodes. A hearty thank to you, Odile, and to you, Nicola, and of course, to you, the audience, for being with us and discussing and engaging with us. We will have more AI talks. We hope that you have found today's episode very interesting. Thank you for tuning into our AI talks at ETUI and see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. -bye.